this guy kept talking and talking and talking. And finally, I was like, dude, just shut the f*** up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. This is episode number 205. I'm talking about a book I read called 10% Happier about meditation, but not in a woo-woo way. Will meditation help you in your business? That's coming up. This is the Red Podcast, the marketing podcast for influencers. Rise above the noise. Expand your audience. Deliver impact. Here's your host, David Hooper. I met my wife almost five years ago. When I met her, she had this dog. His name was Samba, a little mountain cur. And she would always ask me, can I bring Samba over with me when she would come visit my house? And I was like, hell no, you can't bring Samba over because Samba has long claws and I've got these hardwood floors. I was in a super cool bachelor pad. It looked really cool and I wanted to keep it that way. So I was like, no way. But a lot has changed since then. Well, when I got married, we bought a house together and the dog came with her in a house, which also has hardwood floors. So here's the latest thing that's going on with the dog. All we know, he's got this vestibular disorder now. So he's turning around in circles. First, we thought he had a stroke and he's been through this two or three times and he's always gotten better. But for the last week, it's been pretty bad. We're not sure really what's going on. He may have some kind of spinal issue. We're checking that out right now. And that's an interesting story in itself. But I've been taking him outside for the last year because he can't go downstairs anymore. I've had to pick him up. I take him outside, let him do his business. And I pick him up and I bring him in. And recently, just this week, we are spotted by a neighbor who saw me doing this, called us in to animal control. And we got a visit from an animal control officer. I mentioned this to a couple people. They said, man, I would be so pissed. You're doing so much for this dog. You're having to pick him up, take him down the stairs, let him do his business, pick him up, take him back up the stairs. You've got a house that's accessible to him because he can't see. And some guy's calling animal control on you. They should call it on somebody else. I look at it differently. The guy came out to visit, had a great phone conversation to follow up with him afterwards. I've got to send him some documents proving medical care proving that the dog has had his rabies vaccination. And here's the way that I look at this. Somebody cared enough about the welfare of a dog, doesn't know us, just sees me carrying this dog that more or less looks like he's dead. It's a completely dead weight because he's got this vestibular thing, can't really walk, his back legs are collapsing. Somebody saw this and cared enough to call it in to somebody who can actually help. I think that's a huge gift. And I bring this up to say that sometimes in our lives, in our businesses, our relationships, somebody calls us out on something, something that maybe they don't get. Maybe it's something that we're heading down the wrong path and somebody just needs to call us on our shit. Regardless, it's things like this that are opportunities for us to get really clear about what we're doing and fortify our position. Or there's something in our lives that we look at and we need to change positions on because that should happen. As evolving people, our positions should change as well. A few episodes ago, I talked about Southern men, how we pick Ford or we pick Chevy and we never switch brands our entire lives. Well, maybe you should switch brands. There's a great opportunity for that. And there is a great opportunity for us to look at things that we thought we would never do, like bringing a dog into the house when he's going to tear up your floors and change our position on them. The floors. Who cares about the floors? Here's something else that's kind of funny. Mentioned the dog was having some spinal issues. He's got this vestibular thing, so he's super dizzy. But part of his back leg's collapsing. It could be his spine. Well, happened to mention this to my chiropractor. She said, you know we do dogs. And I'd had that conversation with her before. In fact, I've written about that before in the marketing lessons that you can learn from it. But something I never thought that I would do when I wrote that article was take my dog in for a chiropractic adjustment. Well, I did it just yesterday. Those are the kind of adventures that you can have when you switch positions on something. This episode is going to dive deeper into that. It's something that I think is going to help your business. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, podcaster, speaker, marketer, nonfiction, author, or entrepreneur, this is the podcast for you. I'll talk about book publishing, podcasting, speaking, and other marketing elements of your business that you must master to grow and engage your audience. 
That's what RED stands for. Reach, expand, and develop your audience. This is the show where I show you how to take your idea, take your work, make a name for yourself, and make money. You know something I never thought I would do? I've listened to podcasts for a long time. Fresh books. You hear them on all the podcasts. Never thought I would have a use for a service like Fresh Books. When I needed to send an invoice, I would just pull up my trusty Word document, type in the information of the guy who owed me money, print it out, mail it, fax it, take a photo of it, and send it via a phone. No longer. You don't have to do that with Fresh Books. Fresh Books makes it so easy to send an invoice. It just takes about 30 seconds to create and send an invoice. It's got a super intuitive interface. You log into freshbooks.com, fill in your information. It sends the invoice directly to the client for you. It's got a button on the invoice where you can get paid directly, straight from his credit card to your bank account. No longer do you have to wait for the check to come or maybe not to come in some cases. You can see if the invoice has been read and make it so easy for you to get paid Looking to try something new? Try FreshBooks. It won't cost you a thing. FreshBooks is offering a month of unrestricted use to all Red Podcast listeners. It's totally free right now. You don't even need a credit card for the trial. To claim your free month, go to freshbooks.com slash red and enter red in the how did you hear about us section. It's time to get woo-woo. Something else that I said that I would never, ever do was meditation. Never in a million years didn't think that I had the patience for it, but you keep reading these things about meditation. I'm sure you've seen them. Entrepreneurs swear by meditation. Let me give you my background just so you know how I got here. I grew up Methodist. I didn't know a thing about meditation. I thought it was something that hippies and Indian people did. Not true, but that didn't keep me from forming opinions. Have you ever noticed that the outspoken people like the hippies like the people that love meditation, they're always the weirdest ones. One time I was on a business trip and you know that weird moment where you're already seated and everybody's passing you in the plane. They're looking for a seat in the back, hoping to get a seat by themselves, just like you're hoping for. And you don't want to make eye contact with the guy who's coming down the aisle. And I see this guy, he's coming down the aisle. He's in a tie dye. He's got a long beard got little round glasses, total hippie type. And I'm thinking, oh, shit. he's coming by me. And I've had a tough week on the road. And all I want to do is put in my earplugs. And on top of that, put on noise canceling headphones and just fall asleep, spread out a little bit. I'm six foot three. I'm not made for airplane seats. And this guy does sit down next to me. And he's talking about the whole trip, how everybody's been judging him because he's a hippie. And here I was judging him. So that may have been true. But part of the reason that people were judging him was because he would not shut up about meditation. And he smelled like he'd been smoking something. I think he may have been high. I think he may have been a little bit paranoid. So that was adding to this experience. And all I wanted to do was go home. But I wasn't going to get there in peace. And this guy was going on and on and on. So that was kind of my experience with meditation. But one day, the kind of thing that got me started on meditation, well, not really meditation, but yoga was I was in a waiting room. I was doing some business and like every waiting room ever, this thing's got a people magazine. So I'm waiting on my meeting and I'll pick up the people magazine and I see an article about a guy and he was an actor, but the acting thing kind of dried out. You know, he got old, aged out of the roles that he was getting and he'd become a yoga instructor. So he was talking about how great it was for actors, how great it was for people in my position where you're going up, trying to get clients, trying to get jobs. It allowed him to stay mentally focused. He wasn't worried about whether or not he was going to get the job, whether or not he was going to eat if he didn't get the job. So I made a note of it. This yoga thing, maybe this is something that I would benefit from. So the next year, break up. She was my college girlfriend. We'd been together forever. Couldn't remember life without her. But now I was being faced with that situation. So I was desperate. So I looked up a yoga place, and that is what got me into yoga. So fast forward a few years later, I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, doing the music business thing. Everything's going great. I'm doing my yoga, taking it pretty seriously, doing it on a regular basis because I'm consistent at things. But I wasn't really that serious about the meditation and the mind elements of it. So I'm at the studio and there are these flyers. The guru is coming to town. 
and I'm talking with a girl in the class, and she said, yeah, I'm thinking about doing this. She was cute, and I said, well, I am too. So that's how I ended up in what I call the cult. It's not a real cult. I just call it a cult because it kind of looks that way. It would look that way from the outside. The leader wears a robe. He's got a turban. He's got a beard. He's from India. He kind of looks like bin Laden. Go on a few retreats with this guy. Take a few workshops with him. And he's got this thing. 40 days, he says. Do this thing. It's meditation. Like I said, once I commit, I stick it out. I make the commitment and I keep on going. So, okay. I'm going to try it. And I've kept going. I think it's been about 15 years, but I do know this. I've only missed two days since I started. One of those days, I was traveling internationally, lost a day, so it's impossible to pick that day up. The other one, I'd had some medical stuff, some dental stuff, actually, and wasn't able to sit in the position that I needed to do. A little doped up, a little in pain. Wasn't really able to focus and do this. But I've been consistent. And that's why I was interested in a book that I'd been recommended by my friend, John Acuff. You know John Acuff. And if you don't, go to redpodcast.com slash 205. I will link to the interviews that I've done with this guy. He's a New York Times bestselling author. Super cool guy. He's got a book called Do Over that you might be familiar with. He said, man, you got to check out this book. It's called 10% Happier. It's by a guy named Dan Harris. He's a correspondent for ABC News. You may have seen him on Nightline. He's on Good Morning America. He was also, at one time a cocaine and ecstasy user. And while he's on national television, the dude completely freaks out, has a panic attack. So he starts looking for solutions. He finds meditation. And this is what the book is about. It's about a type A person who's really into the job. He's like a war correspondent. He's got total adrenaline going there. He comes back to New York City. He's working for Peter Jennings. All sorts of deadlines all sorts of crazy energy. The guy can never slow down. Then when he is slowing down, when he's off air, maybe when he's on air, he's doing cocaine, he's doing ecstasy. And this is about slowing that mind down. A lot of people say, well, hey, I don't want to slow my mind down. I'll give you this analogy that I heard once. It's like driving a Ferrari. You've got a Ferrari. It's great that it can go fast, but you don't want to drive it fast all the time. It's not meant to be driven fast all the time. It's not safe to drive it fast all the time. Sometimes you need to drive slowly. And that's what meditation helps you do. It's not stopping your brain. It's allowing you to control your brain just like you would control a car. 10% happier. Why the name? Dan Harris says that meditation makes you feel about 10% happier. So much more honest than my hippie friend on the plane who's all about meditation and leaving his body at will and tantric sex that lasts for 15 hours at a time. 10% happier. That's pretty good, right? You're a happy guy. What would 10% on top of that mean to you? It's worth reading the book, right? The best part of the book, it's not really the meditation stuff. Even if you're not interested in meditation, it's the fact that you get the behind the scenes of a big media and content creation company. This is a dude who's in war zones, He's on Good Morning America. He's on Nightline. He's doing live TV when he's not on live TV. He's producing stories, preparing stories for Peter Jennings, who apparently was a huge ball buster. And to learn about the behind the scenes of that, I like to see what makes successful people successful. This is a great example of that. And there's a lot of really interesting stuff in this book. It's not just about meditation. So again, if you have no desire to learn about meditation, any of this woo-woo stuff, Don't worry about this. This is a cool book regardless. One of the things, he's got a relationship with Ted Haggard. You remember Ted Haggard? Ted Haggard had a huge church, one of these super right-wing evangelical churches. He was the kind of guy who would come out and preach against homosexuality. Uh Uh-oh, turns out Ted Haggard's gay, and he likes to hire gay hookers, and he likes to do crystal meth with them. This book showed the depth of people. I really was frustrated with the Ted Haggard situation. To me, it was super hypocritical for somebody to come out, advise President Bush on important situations, have a huge following, and advise them not to support the gays. If you listen to the Gay Pride episode, you know I love the gays. So I get frustrated when I see that kind of hypocrisy. This book, the relationship that Ted Haggard had with Dan Harris, it showed me the depth of this guy. It made me kind of actually want to get to know Ted Haggard. As it turned out, Ted Haggard was one of the coolest guys that Dan Harris knew always calling him back, always emailing him back, 
super cool guy. Had some demons. Couldn't quite wrap his head around the fact that he was gay. Of course, there's the crystal meth problem and the thing for gay hookers. But still a pretty cool guy. This book shows the depth of that. It's going to make you think about the depth of relationships that you have with other people or about the people that you hear about in the media. You say, man, I can't stand them. They're people too, though. There's a lot of depth out there. And I think when we're open to that, we can have better relationships ourselves. We can be a little bit more forgiving. And to me, that right there will make you 10% happier by itself. You ever been to a party and then you leave, but your friend stays and he calls you the next day and he's like, oh man, it got really good when you left. That is bullshit. Also bullshit. When people talk to you about meditation and what they're experiencing most of the time, I think that this is a really honest look at what meditation is, the benefits of meditation for you. One of the biggest benefits, I think being mindful and being present to things. You look at people just on the street, walking zombies, put a cell phone in their hand, even worse. Mobile phones have made this even worse. We've got the walking dead all around us. These are people that are just tired of life. They're basically ready to die and practicing death while they're still alive. Meditation helps you to be mindful, helps you to be present, enjoy life a little bit more. It's about listening to yourself. When you know that a situation is not right for you, getting out of that situation, creating something that's better for you. I think it's about balance in life, not being so overworked, overwhelmed, overbooked in a situation where we lose track of why we're doing it in the first place, finding that balance in life. Like I talked about with the car, you don't always want to be driving fast. Sometimes you need to drive slow. Sometimes slow is where you need to be, and meditation is going to help you to find that balance. I was speaking a couple months ago. I was at a gig, actually talking about podcasting and talking about marketing, and the guy was asking me, How do you come up with ideas for your podcast? You do a lot of them. How do you come up with ideas? I told him, I'm always on the lookout. It's a marketing podcast. So if I'm in a store, I see something being marketed a certain way, take a picture of it, make notes of it. If I hear something in an audio book that I'm listening to in another podcast, make note of it. If I have a conversation that triggers something in me. So he said, yeah, basically you're being present, it sounds like. And that's a good way to look at it. Being present lets you make sure that you don't miss these opportunities that are all around you. So when I talk about meditation, what I'm talking about is just being present. You don't have to join a cult, find a guru with a turban, a robe, an Indian passport, a beard. This is about you being present. And that right there changes everything. If you think meditation is boring, even the thought of it's boring, just replace that with mindfulness, not letting all the opportunities that are going by you pass you up. You suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. A lot of people do. I did an entire episode on it. Mindfulness is going to help you with that. And mindfulness is going to make sure that you don't miss out. I'm not a meditation teacher. I'm not a mindfulness teacher. There are a lot of courses that can help you with this. My advice, though, if you want to be more present, to get out and do something live. Speak live. Broadcast on live radio. Do a podcast interview. It's going out live. Any kind of stuff that you're doing where there's no repeat and where there are people around you and you can't stop, that's going to help you be more present. I've got a group of guys that I work out with every weekend. That hour that I get together with these guys every Saturday morning is probably when I am most present because we are working out so hard and I'm with this group and they're going on. If I stop, those guys are gone. You've got to be present to what you're doing. You've got to be present when the exercise is called out. You've got to be present when you're running one foot after another. It's a great way, I think, to be mindful. It takes a lot of forms, not just meditation. So do what you can to be more mindful, and you will see the difference. Hey, you know who's not mindful? All these people that are living in front of their mobile phone. And you see a lot of that in the form of Snapchat, people taking videos of every single thing that happens to them, not worried about their lives and what they're experiencing, but worried about broadcasting what they're doing to people who aren't even there. On the next episode, I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Snapchat. If you've got questions or comments about this episode or any other Red Podcast, reach out to me. It's at David Hooper on Twitter. Happy to hear from you. Happy for comments, questions, suggestions. At David Hooper on Twitter. Thanks again. And I'll see you on that episode and future episodes of Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast the marketing podcast for influencers. 
Never miss an episode. Subscribe now with your iPhone, Android, or via RSS at redpodcast.com.